Hi, we're going to talk about calculating solubility from KSP. Um, now, there are a couple of ways that they could ask this question. I think this is one of the challenges in doing KSP is that there are several different ways that they can all ask the same question. So, when um, if you read the term calculate solubility, that could also be asked in three other forms. Um, it could be uh, what are the equilibrium concentrations of ions. You could also be asked, what's the amount of salt that dissolves? Um, or you could be asked, what are the saturated concentrations of the ions? Um, all of those are really just, hey, calculate solubility. Um, so put this down in your notes, study that. And as you do your homework, I'm sure that you're going to see some questions that are worded all four ways and put them all in the same folder in your brain of, these all mean I just need to calculate solubility. How much dissolves at equilibrium? What's the maximum amount that can dissolve at equilibrium? And that tells me how soluble it is. So here's an example problem for us. It says calculate solubility, which it could have said, what are the equilibrium concentrations? What amount of salt dissolves? What are the saturated concentrations? That all would be the same question. Calculate the solubility of calcium hydroxide in, they want two units. Um, in moles per, per liter and grams per liter uh, if the KSP is 5.5 times 10 to the minus 5. Um, now it's possible that they wouldn't give you the KSP, they say calculate solubility, and you'd have to go to a, a solubility table and look that up. Now remember when we're doing KSP there are two pieces of information. There's the K value and there's the equilibrium. What are the concentrations of equilibrium? When they're asking for solubility, they're asking for E, the equilibrium concentrations, which means if they're asking for E, we've got to have K. You have to have K. So go to a table and look it up if it's not given to you. All right, first place I always begin is writing this equation, and it's just the dissolution of the salt. So we are going to have calcium hydroxide, and that's a solid. Always understood that the salt's a solid and that you drop it in water and it will dissociate into its cation and anion. The cation is calcium, that's a two plus charge, the aqueous, plus the anion is the hydroxide. That's an OH minus, and I look, make sure this is balanced. We've got two of the hydroxides, so I have to put a two here. When that calcium hydroxide dissociates, it produces the one calcium ion and the two hydroxide ions. Let's go ahead and set up our ice table. Um, so we've got I, C, E. Now solids, we don't use, we don't count solids or liquids in our equilibrium expression because they're constant. So those are dashes. Initially, when we put this in pure water, um, we're going to say no uh, calcium and the hydroxide, we're going to put zero there. That's going to be considered negligible. I know that we have Kw and that the, that comes into equilibrium. Um, because of Kw, you still put zero. It'll be negligible. It'll be really small compared to this. Um, now, change. So this is going to break apart. And when this dissociates, it will produce an amount of calcium. And notice the coefficient one. So one mole. For every one mole that dissociates, produces one mole of calcium and 2x, two moles of the hydroxide. Remember, you just look at the coefficient, and that's the number that you put in front of x, the unknown amount that ionizes, that dissociates. Not ionizes, sorry, that dissociates. Okay, I plus C gives us E. Zero plus X is X. Zero plus two X is two X. Nice. Now let's go ahead and write the equilibrium expression. So we're going to get KSP equals products. That's going to be your calcium ion raised to the first power, or I could leave that blank, understood to be to the first power, times the concentration of hydroxide and be really careful. What's that coefficient? A two. So that's going to be squared. Now we can plug in all of our numbers. We are going to have the 5.5 times 10 to the minus five. That's the KSP that we looked up just from the uh, solubility table equals, all right, calcium is X. The hydroxide is two X and that's squared. So let's do our math here. Two X times two X is four X squared times x is 4x cubed. So 5.5 times 10 to the minus 5 equals 4x cubed. Just be careful with your algebra. Double check yourself every time you do this. Um, let's go ahead and solve for x. So if I divide both sides by 4, 
So we're going to get 1.375 times 10 to the minus 5 equals x cubed. Okay, how do I get rid of a cube? We cube root. So let's take the cube root of both sides. And when we put that in our calculator, we're going to get x equals 0 0.0240. Nice, nice. So we found x. Um, let me come back here and write this down. x equals 0 0.0240. Now what's the unit on this? What are the units that we use for equilibrium? That bracket's a code. Remember, it's molarity. So we actually found the molarity. This is the molarity of the calcium ion that dissociates. Now, if we wanted the molarity of the hydroxide ion, what would you do? Just multiply it by two. It would be 0 0.048 molar. Now let's come back. What was the question? It wants to know the solubility of the salt, of the solid. So we've got to do just a little bit of stoichiometry. I'm going to talk it out and also write it out to prove it to you. So notice here, one mole of calcium hydroxide produces one mole of calcium. So if I've got, if I produce 0 0.0240 molar, because this is a one to one molar ratio, that means that's also the molarity of the calcium hydroxide. Let me prove that to you though with stoichiometry. Um, I could take 0 0.0240 moles of calcium ion for every one liter, and then one mole of calcium ion came from one mole of calcium hydroxide. There's one mole of calcium inside of the calcium hydroxide. And if we do that math, moles of calcium um, cancel out and we will end up with 0 0.042 times one divided by one. You get 0 0.04 or 024 moles of calcium hydroxide divided by a liter. It's the same thing, 0 0.0 two, four molar calcium hydroxide. So I'm going to erase this. I'm going to write that down. That's our first piece of information right here. So the calcium hydroxide solubility is going to be 0 0.024 molar. That's how much will dissolve. 0.024 moles will dissolve in every one liter of solution. Okay, so that takes care of this. And all you had to do was the stoichiometry. So quick, dirty way to do this. When you find X, um, that's going to be one mole. That came from one mole of the solid. When you find X, all you have to do is write that down as the molarity of the salt. Um, so, you know, look at it, think about it, check the molarities that it's a one-to-one -one ratio, but X is going to be the same as the molarity of the salt. Okay, now they wanted grams per liter. Well, Molarities, moles per liter, all we have to do is change moles to grams using molar mass. So let's do that. I'm going to have 0 0.024 moles of my calcium hydroxide for every one liter. I calculated the molar mass and the molar mass of calcium hydroxide is 74.1 grams for every one mole. So that was pretty easy. Notice moles cancel and we multiply what unit am I left with? We are left with grams right there per liter. So 0.024 times 74.1 divided by 1 is going to give us 1.78 grams of the calcium hydroxide will dissolve in every one liter of solution. Um, so to take that last step, simply use molar mass to go from moles to grams. Think your way through it. Look at the units. The units will tell you what to do. When you break apart molarity, moles per liter, it's easy to see, oh, I can get rid of moles, convert that to grams, just using molar mass. Okay, so there you have it. Honestly, here's what I think is the hardest part, is recognizing that these four um, phrases all mean the same thing. It's calculating the solubility the amount that dissolves to get an equilibrium concentration. That's what all four of those mean. So wrap your brain around this, put it in that same file folder in your brain, making that make sense that this is where you live. Okay, good work. Tick, uh, check out the KSP uh, equilibrium playlist if you need some more help on KSP. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.